Hello and welcome back to Children's Reading Cove. This is chapter 17 of My Side of the Mountain by Jean Craighead George, in which I pile up wood and go on with winter. Now I am almost to that snowstorm. The morning after I had the awful thought about the wood, I got up early. I was glad to hear the nuthatches and the chickadees. They gave me the feeling that I still had time to chop. They were bright, busy, and totally unworried about storms. I shouldered my axe and went out. I had used most of the wood around the hemlock house, so I crossed to the top of the gorge. First, I took all the dry limbs off the trees and hauled them home. Then I chopped down dead trees. With wood all around me, I got in my tree and put my arm out. I made an X in the needles. Where the X lay, I began stacking wood. I wanted to be able to reach my wood from the tree when the snow was deep. I piled a big stack at this point. I reached out the other side of the door and made another X. I piled wood there. Then I stepped around my piles and had a fine idea. I decided that if I used up one pile, I could tunnel through the snow to the next and the next. I made many wood piles leading out into the forest. I watched the sky. It was as blue as summer, but ice was building up along the waterfall at the gorge. I knew winter was coming. Although each day the sun would rise in a bright sky and the days would follow cloudless, I piled more wood. This is when I realized that I was scared. I kept cutting wood and piling it like a nervous child biting his nails. It was almost with relief that I saw the storm arrive. Now I'm back where I began. I won't tell it again. I shall go on now with my relief and the fun and wonderfulness of living on a mountain mountaintop in the winter. The barren weasel loved the snow and was up and about in it every day before Frightful and I had had our breakfast. Professor Bando's jam was my standby on those cold mornings. I would eat mounds of it on my hard acorn pancakes, which improved by adding hickory nuts. With these as a bracer for the day, Frightful and I would stamp out into the snow and reel down the mountain. She would fly above my head as I slid and plunged and rolled to the creek. The creek was frozen. I would slide out onto it and break a little hole and ice fish. The sun would glance off the white snow. The birds would fly through the trees and I would come home with a fresh meal from the valley. I found there were still plants under the snow and I would dig down and get tea berry leaves and wintergreen. I got this idea from the deer who found a lot to eat under the snow. I tried some of the mosses that they liked, but decided moss was for the deer. Around four o'clock, we would all wander home. The nuthatches, the chickadees, the cardinals, frightful, and me. And now came the nicest part of wonderful days. I would stop in the meadow and throw frightful off my fist. She would wind into the sky and wade above me as I kicked the snow-bent grasses. A rabbit would pop up, or sometimes a pheasant, out of the sky from a pinpoint of a thing would dive my beautiful falcon. And oh, she was beautiful when she made a strike. All power and beauty. On the ground, she would cover her quarry. Her perfect feathers would stand up on her body and her wings would arch over the food. She never touched it until I came and picked her up. 
I would go home and feed her, then crawl into my tree room, light a little fire on my hearth, and Frightful and I would begin the winter evening. I had lots of time to cook and try mixing different plants with different meats to make things taste better. And I must say, I originated some excellent meals. When dinner was done, the fire would blaze on. Frightful would sit on the footpost of the bed and preen and wipe her beak and shake. Just the fact that she was alive was a warming thing to know. I would look at her and wonder what made a bird a bird and a boy a boy. The forest would become silent. I would know that the barren weasel was about, but I would not hear him. Then I would get a piece of birch bark and write, or I would make new things out of deer hide, like a hood for frightful, and finally I would take off my suit and my moccasins and crawl into my bed under the sweet-smelling deer skin. The fire would burn itself out, and I would be asleep. Those were nights of the very best sort. One night, I read some of my old notes about how to pile wood so I could get to it under the snow. And I laughed until Frightful awoke. I hadn't made a single tunnel. I walked on the snow to get wood, like the barren weasel went for food or the deer went for moss.